In the popular fictional novel The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams, Trin Tragula invented the total perspective vortex to annoy his wife, who constantly nagged him about all the time she thought he was wasting, and liked to command him to have some sense of proportion. So, fed up with this, Tragula decided to get back at her by making the vortex. This grand creation showed users, as Adams described it, the entire unimaginable infinity of creation, and somewhere in it, a tiny little marker, a microscopic dot on a microscopic dot, which says, you are here. It used the theory of atomic interactivity, which is the idea that every atom of the universe is affected by every other atom of the universe, and, in theory, an image of the universe could be extrapolated from a single piece of matter. When Trintragula had his wife try the vortex, well, her brain was instantly annihilated. The shock of seeing herself in relation to the very vastness of reality as extrapolated from a piece of fairy cake destroyed it. Despite this not being his intention or desired discovery, Tragula did prove something quite conclusively, in his opinion anyway. He proved that if life was going to exist in a universe of this size, then the one thing it could not afford to have is a sense of proportion. Though I don't agree with Tragula's conclusion, I must say that the total perspective vortex is an excellent fictional parallel for a little something called the overview effect. The term overview effect describes the psychological shift astronauts experience when viewing the Earth from their spacecraft. It can bring on realizations that have been compared by some astronauts to spiritual awakenings, and it's a feeling that never gets old for NASA astronaut Ricky Arnold, who has been to space twice. He describes the lack of an analogous emotional experience he could draw upon the first time he saw Earth, and how that caused his experience to be all the more stark and shocking. What he must have seen, what all astronauts see, it's unimaginable to us Earth dwellers. We can't fathom seeing everything we know all at once because we never do. Life to us is contained to the dish soap bubbles we've blown around ourselves, and few of us will ever try to pop them. Astronauts, however, have no choice. Their bubbles burst into filmy confetti strips the moment they're faced with the reality of our Earth, and due to this, they are permanently changed. They gain an awareness of Earth's size and fragility when compared to the universe as a whole, and they gain the belief that the petty things we argue about here are a mere distraction from the bigger issues. They even feel a greater appreciation of the beauty of life, the interconnectedness of it, and also of our responsibility to preserve nature. I mean, just look at this. Here's Asia with its political borders, the way we learn about it in school. And here it is as Ricky Arnold and hundreds of others see it. Those were just images. But to see that in real life, there's no coming back from that unfazed. Frank White, philosopher and creator of the term back in 1987, describes the overview effect as such in an interview with the NASA Johnson Space Center. And so the big, sort of, what would I call it, insight about their experience is that it is an experience. And, they t and so they talk about the fact that it's really hard to convey it because all you have is words. And part of it is seeing the Earth itself. Part of it is seeing the Earth against the backdrop of the universe. And so I suppose one of the most important insights was that if we want people to understand the overview effect in a way that will lead to changes in their behavior, we have to have them experience it. So, behavior change. That is the final result of the overview effect. What astronauts experience causes them to have a different view on life. And when combined with an increased sense of responsibility, this makes them want to take action and beat the issues our planet faces. Scientists love this. They have a great desire to expose whole communities of people to the effect. The issue with this, as White highlighted, is that the effect is intrinsically an experience, and it's quite difficult to fly everyone on Earth to space. Now, organizations such as Space for Humanity have been looking to send regular citizens to suborbital space uh, for a few minutes for the sole reason of getting them to feel the effect. But this method is very expensive, think tens of millions of dollars, highly polluting and limiting. I mean, after all, normal space travel allows for only a small select group of participants. As of April 2019, only 566 out of 7 billion. That is 0.000008%. What if there was a way, though, to easily allow whole communities, cities, even countries, to experience something similar to this effect, but from Earth? How would people's brains react to such a simulation, and how could it look? Is it even possible to virtually replicate something that's so innately about an authentic experience? I first felt a weak version of the effect myself around September 2019. 
I was watching a video called Time Lapse of the Future, A Journey to the End of Time, by one of my favorite video creators, John D. Boswell, and I was captivated. Within the first three minutes of the video, I watched the Earth get violently consumed by the fading sun, by a, by a dying raw going out with a bang. It evoked strong feelings in me. It forced me to grapple with the scale of the universe, and it made me wonder if I was spending too much time on life's day-to-day -day stressors. Later, I realized that I could use this video in an experiment to discover how the overview effect could affect my people my age. Because while it wasn't an exact match for orbiting the Earth, the 8th grade science budget didn't really allow for space travel. <laughs> so I put together an experiment, tested a group of my fellow students, and I wrote a lab report. The data ended up being inaccurate due to my own mistakes, but my anecdotal observations supported my theory. I could see the students' fascination with the video, I could, I could see it affecting them, and that was enough for me to pursue this line of inquiry. So although my experiment had helped me to realize the potential success of a video simulation in recreating the effect, I still hoped desperately to think of an objective way to replicate it within earthbound people. Something that would affect everyone who tried it in the same way and to the same extent as the real effect. A pill, a drug, an electric shock passed through the, just the right places. But to do that, I'd need to know what the overview effect actually does to the brain, and that's something no one currently knows. So, without such information, how could I quantitatively observe this elusive phenomenon when no one else had? I thought of many ideas, from brain activity to the structure of the brain. But in the absence of the expertise I needed to understand my ideas properly, I was lost. I looked at my ideas and I finally decided that since I'm not a neuroscientist or a psychologist, I should probably contact someone that actually knows what they're doing. I talked to psychology professor Chris Bowie from Queen's University at Kingston, and among other things, he suggested that I take my focus away from trying to prove brain change to support my case. He said an observed change in behavior is often enough to reflect a change in the brain. And if I may, I'd like to bring your attention to the final result of the overview effect that we discussed earlier, a permanent observable change in behavior. So, what's next? Seeing as my unrealistic plans for a grand brain scan experiment have shifted away, at least for now, I'm planning to do a do-over of my first experiment. Eliminating the demand characteristic, creating specific and controlled age groups, and better choosing a new simulation and control are all among improvements I will make. I plan to use a video game or a VR experience, as I think it might create more of an air of responsibility than a video that can be viewed passively and doesn't rely on viewer engagement. I will also do more research on observed behavioral change in astronauts after the effect. To close off, I invite you to ponder with me some of the questions that have come up throughout. Do astronauts' highly productive and positive personalities make them predisposed to experiencing the effect in a different way to the average person? What about expectations? Would the effect lose its power if it was expected? Oftentimes, astronauts report experiencing the effect at a seemingly random time in their journey when they didn't expect it even, for instance, while eating a meal with the other astronauts. Can this be replicated? What about the idea of a simulation itself? If we keep things simple and compare the overview effect to, say, a roller coaster ride, we can clearly see all the factors that are unreplicable in a video. Wind slashing against your face, screams from the other people surrounding you, the adrenaline, the slight nausea, all these things make a roller coaster ride what it is. Is it all or nothing with this effect? Even if all of this was replicable, would the knowledge that it's all fake change it? And finally, is this all just me trying to selfishly find a quick alternative to, be to working on becoming a better person? Right now, there are more questions than there are answers, but it isn't discouraging. I believe our world is heading into a critical phase, and the decisions we make in the next few years about everything we may currently dismiss as arbitrary, will come crashing down on us if we don't start coming at all of the issues we face as a species in a more unified way. And we can do it. We're an amazingly adaptive and innovative species, but I think we need a push. I think we need something to come along and burst our bubbles. And as our world seems to be getting observably worse by every passing year, I think a little perspective just might be the answer. Seeing space might be the key to saving Earth.